edit screen. Traction's edit page is split into several areas and is laid out broadly to reflect the flow of data through the program. So, you bring MIDI and audio data into the software from the left side, either by dragging it from the file browser or by recording it from the inputs. The resulting clips can then be arranged and edited on the tracks in the middle and are processed and mixed by filters on the right before emerging at the outputs. The browser section can be resized by dragging its right edge and can be hidden from view with the button in the top left corner when not needed. Likewise, the filter section can be resized and can be hidden with the button in the top right corner or by pressing Ctrl, Shift and F. Traction treats tracks, clips and filters as objects which can be dragged and dropped or cut, copied and pasted with the standard Ctrl plus X, C and V keys respectively and they display their parameters in the panel at the bottom of the screen when selected. So if you select a track the properties panel will display all the routing options for that track and if you select a MIDI clip it will display that clip's quantize and groove options. If you hold the control or command key you can select multiple objects of the same type in which case the properties panel will affect all of those objects. The whole bottom section of the screen can be resized by dragging the top edge and can be hidden using the long bar shaped button in the top right corner. The global and marker buttons just to the left allow you to show or hide two special tracks which are grouped at the top of the edit page. The global track allows you to define tempo, time signature or key changes which affect the whole edit, while the marker track allows you to label sections of the edit such as intro or chorus or middle eight. In the middle we have normal tracks. These can be used for stereo or mono audio clips, MIDI clips or to display automation curves or any combination at once. Tracks can be resized by dragging the bottom edge or by double clicking the track name or with the default Z key command. MIDI clips automatically display a piano roll editor when enlarged and audio clips show a waveform display if this is enabled in the options menu. Tracks can be organized into folders and subfolders by dragging and dropping or by holding control to select several tracks and pressing the create folder containing button in the properties panel. Tracks, folder tracks and clips can all be renamed by selecting them and pressing tab to highlight the name field in the properties panel. You can zoom horizontally by right clicking and dragging or using the mouse scroll wheel when the cursor is hovering over the tracks area. Holding the shift key allows us to navigate using the mouse wheel, although those last two can be reversed via the options menu. Holding the control or command key allows vertical zooming as well. Control or command plus F8 will zoom out fully in both directions to display an overview of the entire edit. Just above the tracks is the timeline. This can be toggled between bars and beats, seconds and frames, or seconds and milliseconds using the T key command or via the timecode menu. The timeline can be dragged to navigate through the edit, as can the scroll bar under the tracks. If you hover the mouse cursor over the timeline directly above the play cursor, it will change to a four-way arrow symbol. Left clicking here allows you to drag the play cursor left or right while simultaneously zooming horizontally by dragging up or down. The browser section can be used to search your hard drives for audio or MIDI files which can then be imported by dragging and dropping into the edit and you can create bookmarks for favourite folders. Alternatively, this section can be switched to show your loop library, which will be explained fully in another chapter, a list of markers, or the current contents of the clipboard.
The list of markers corresponds to the marker track displayed at the top of the edit, and each marker is assigned a number. If you type a number of up to three digits and press enter, Traction will look for a marker with the same number. If it finds one, it will move the play cursor to the marker position. Otherwise, it will create a new marker with that number at the play cursor position. New markers can also be created via the Add button at the bottom of the markers list. You can then use the arrow symbols in the top corners of the marker clip to stretch it out to indicate a region. Double clicking a marker in the list will move the playhead to the start of the marker clip. If you select a marker, either by clicking in the marker list in the left panel or by clicking on the marker clip on the marker track, you have options in the Properties panel to change the number assigned that marker or to give it a name such as Chorus. There is also a Type option to switch the type between bar and beats markers which will change their position when the tempo is changed in order to remain at the same relative song position or Absolute markers which will stay locked to the same time code regardless of the tempo. As an example, if you were scoring the soundtrack for a film you would need to use bar and beats markers to indicate different musical sections of your arrangement, but use absolute markers to indicate important cue points in the film. You could then adjust the tempo of your music and watch the different types of marker move relative to each other. If you select the marker track, you can opt to view the different types of markers on separate tracks, in which case you can change the marker type by dragging from one track to another. If you select a marker clip and press Ctrl and Enter, Traction will play just the section of the edit indicated by that clip. In between the browser and the tracks, we have the track names display, along with the MIDI and audio inputs. You can rename a track by selecting it and typing in the name field in the properties panel. If you need to rename several tracks, you can hold Alt and use the up and down arrow keys to select each in turn, and then press Tab to highlight the name field ready to type. Each track has an input icon which will be blank if no input is assigned. To assign an input, click the icon and a list will pop up with all the MIDI and audio inputs you enabled in the settings page. The input icon will then display an R button to record enable the input and a small level meter. The input icons can be hidden when not needed using the button in the top right corner or by pressing Ctrl Shift and I. And this leaves more room for the track names. The filters area to the right of the tracks contains Traction's mixer section. In Traction terminology, the channel faders and meters are filters, as are any VST plugins you choose to use. New filters can be added by dragging and dropping the new filter icon and choosing from the list. Filters can also be rearranged by dragging and dropping and can be copied, pasted and deleted in the usual way. VST plugins with their own GUI will launch in their own window when selected. These windows can be locked so that more than one GUI can be displayed at the same time. The track names strip and the filters area can be scrolled vertically with the mouse wheel when the cursor is over them. Holding the control or command key still changes the mouse wheel to a vertical zoom control. A mouse wheel is extremely useful for efficiently navigating around the edit page, but if you don't have one you can use the small collection of buttons underneath the filters section instead. Moving down, we find a display of the current tempo, time signature and root key, and the current position in the song. Clicking the timecode display allows you to move the cursor to a specific position by typing in the value directly. While clicking on the tempo, time signature or root key fields allows you to edit the current value. If you need a tempo change at a specific part of the song, move the cursor to that point, click on the tempo display to select it, 
and press the Insert Tempo Change at Cursor button. You can now type in a new tempo or adjust the slider. Notice that the global track displays this tempo change graphically as a sharp step to indicate a sudden change from one tempo to another. You can drag the horizontal lines to adjust the tempos or drag the node to adjust the tempos or the position of the change. There is also another node of a slightly different colour on the corner of the step. If you drag this node up or down, you can change the curve value to create a gradual tempo change. Time signature changes can be inserted in the same way. Click the time signature field to select it and press the insert time signature at cursor button in the properties panel. You can then click the values in the time sig field to choose the new signature. It doesn't make sense to offer gradual changes between signatures, so the changes are displayed as fractions on the global track, which can be dragged or copied and pasted. The transport controls are fairly self-explanatory, consisting of play and record buttons, plus fast forward, rewind and return to start. There is also a pair of automation play and record buttons, which you can use to record the changes you make to a mix as it plays back, and which will be explained in detail in another chapter. The Ext MTC button relates to the MIDI timecode options in the timecode menu, and should be turned on when synchronising Traction's playback with an external device. Underneath this section, there are two buttons which relate to the left and right markers in the tracks area. These markers can be positioned around any selected clips using the M key command or dragged manually and are used to define the loop region when the loop button is turned on and the in and out points for the punch record option. By default these buttons are assigned to the L and P key commands respectively. The click or metronome can be turned on or off by pressing C. Settings for the click can be found in the click track menu. Choosing a MIDI output will allow the use of a hardware MIDI device for the click if needed. Change click settings allows the MIDI notes to be defined for MIDI clicks or audio files to be defined for audio clicks. The snap button to the right is linked to the Q key command. The snap resolution is automatically adjusted according to the current zoom level. Snapping can also be enabled for the cursor and for neighbouring clip boundaries via the snapping menu. The end-to-end -end button will keep the audio engine running, even when traction is not playing or recording. This allows plug-in synths to be played from a MIDI controller without having to start playback first. The scroll button forces the display to follow the current playback position. You can choose whether to have smooth scrolling or sudden screen jumps via the options menu. Underneath the buttons we have a CPU meter to show processor activity. To the right we have the master section, with a master fader and space for four pre-fade master filters. Selecting the master fader provides options in the properties panel to scan the edit and find a normalised master volume level, or to apply global fades. The Racks area is hidden by default, but can be toggled with the Racks button at the top right of the screen, or Control or Command plus G. The Rack can also be resized by dragging the top edge. Racks will be explained in more detail later on. The bottom left corner of the edit page contains Undo 
and redo buttons. The traction also uses the standard Ctrl plus Z key command for undo. Switching to the settings page, then file settings, allows you to choose how many levels of undo will be remembered. This section also contains an import button, which will allow tracks to be imported from an audio CD or projects to be imported from Mackie HDR recorders, and also an export button to render audio mixdowns, export MIDI files or create archives. To load up a QuickTime movie file, press the Movies button, choose Set QuickTime Movie File and point traction to the file you wish to use. You can also specify a start time for the file from the same menu, and you can launch the movie window at any time by pressing Alt plus M. The window can be dragged around by left clicking, while right clicking allows you to set it always on top, to change the window size, and to choose whether the video soundtrack is audible or not. Audible or not.